A steady stream all morning long that we've checked in behind Amanda this morning. Well, this morning the Taliban is taking over areas of Afghanistan in the wake of the U.S. swift exit now, and that fallout really continues. Joining us live now is former Florida Senate President Mike Karadopoulos. Mike, good to see you this morning. Thanks for joining us on this Labor Day. Good morning, Ryan. Thanks for the opportunity. So let's talk about the Afghan latest. And the hardest thing, Mike, is we don't always get the information. There's not a lot of media crews there. So we hear there's reports now that there are people stuck uh, not on the tarmac. They're now at the hotel. Six planes that can't leave. And there are different descriptions. Some say the Taliban's not letting them leave. Others say the Taliban official point on this would be they don't have their paperwork. But either way, those Americans are stuck there. They really are. This has just been a debacle since day one, and it's something that we've talked about for weeks now that just didn't have to happen this way. Uh, the United States was in, in a situation where there would have, should have been an orderly exit from Afghanistan. You know, common sense says that the first thing you do is get civilians out first. First thing you do is get those interpreters who helped so many American soldiers in Afghanistan. Even the ones who saved now President Biden off the mountaintops in Afghanistan did not make it out. And and seeing those horrific pictures of the guns and weapons and tanks, uh, let alone the cash that was left behind from American taxpayers, is just uh, unruly to say the least. And uh, it's it's going to be a chaotic situation. And what we all hope is that we don't see Afghanistan fall back into what it was prior to 9/11 a haven for terrorists, but given the early indications that you just mentioned, it looks like it likely will be another place where terrorists can hang out, plan, and operate against not only the United States, but other Western nations. Yeah, definitely some difficult days ahead in Afghanistan. And this is all weighed on the president's approval rating for sure, certainly the first crisis he's faced in his presidency. Yes, it is. Uh, right now, he's at his lowest approval rating. Um, in Florida, it's only about 40 percent. Nationally, it's about 44, 45 percent, but he's definitely in the negative. And the, the emotions are getting a lot stronger, meaning those people who say they strongly support the president are in the 20s, whereas those people who strongly disapprove of the president um, are in the 40s. So there's a gap of about 20 points there from the 20s to the 40s. And so the president's in a tough situation right now. And, and unfortunately, if it's, it's, in my opinion, his own, his own doing, meaning that border situation has been terrible, of course, Afghanistan. And the biggest frustration we're all going through, of course, is the continued crisis with COVID. The deaths continue to rise. And uh, even with the vaccine, et cetera, you're seeing us in a very tough situation. And it's all weighing down, not only on the president, but all elected officials across the country because of the frustration that Americans are feeling. Mike, let's finish with the Texas abortion law. Of course, that is one that we, we've seen in the past. It's not just a Texas issue. It quickly becomes a national debate. You see companies weigh in. You see courts weigh in. Uh, where could this go from here? And where do you see things right now? Well, the, the Texas law, to kind of uh, narrow it down, it, 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 it calls for what's called the fetal heartbeat. And the fetal heartbeat could take place as early as six weeks. And at that point, it would become very restrictive in Texas. This law is not scheduled to take place or go into action until September. But uh, recently, a federal judge has said that they want to suspend this law, look at it more closely. The Supreme Court decided not in an emergency situation to take it on by a five to four vote. But I fully anticipate this law being challenged all the way to the United States Supreme Court. But it does bring, as you mentioned, Ryan, abortion issues front and center. Here in Florida, we have 24 week waiting period and we also have to have parental consent this would bring it down to six weeks potentially in texas and i think you're gonna see a big big political reaction to this on both sides yeah this was my next follow-up question mike there have been a couple florida lawmakers said could this work in florida should we try this how do you foresee when when things get back in session in january could we see anything similar to this in the state of florida I do think you'll see um, bills filed. I'm not sure if something will pass. Again, Florida already has a pretty restrictive abortion law, 24 weeks. Also, a person has to go under it with an ultrasound and have the option of seeing the ultrasound. And there also is counseling involved. And if you're under the age of 18, there's requirement of parental consent. And so we have some somewhat restrictive laws here in Florida designed to make sure that the person going through that abortion knows all the facts before performing this very important act. All right, Mike, got to leave it there. Always appreciate the insight. Good to see you this morning, my friend. Thank you, Ryan. Developing in Lakeland.